The Kuiper Belt is a region outside most of the planets of the solar system. There is a space outside of most of the planets in the solar system called the Kuiper Belt. The first object found in the Kuiper Belt was Pluto. It took about 60 years to find any more. The first time people saw something from the Kuiper Belt was on November 2, 2015. It used to be one of the most interesting pictures ever taken from space, but now that's changed. There has never been a clearer picture of the Kuiper Belt than the one that was just taken by the James Webb Telescope. Join US on this cosmic journey James Webb Telescope finally found what NASA was searching in the Kuiper Belt. There is a cold donut-shaped area called the Kuiper Belt in the outer solar system. It is farther away from the Sun than Neptune, which is the eighth planet from the Sun. It was first interesting because of its shape, but then it became clear that this would be one of the most interesting things about Earth. The Kuiper Belt is named for the scientist Gerard Kuiper, whose work in the middle of the 20th century helped us understand the area beyond Pluto. However, he wasn't the one who found it. Kuiper wrote a scientific paper in 1951 that speculated about the possibility of things beyond Pluto. Kuiper's study was mostly about the idea that there might be objects beyond Pluto. It didn't go into specifics about what those objects would be like or how they would be arranged in this area. At first, Pluto was thought to be the main feature of the Kuiper belt. However, it is now known that Neptune's orbit, not Pluto's, sets the inner edge of the belt. The gravitational pull of Neptune has been very important in shaping how the Kuiper belt moves. Astronomers knew about Kuiper's groundbreaking ideas and contributions, even though his statements did not exactly match up with what was seen in the Kuiper belt. After some time, the idea of the Kuiper belt and the things beyond Pluto that are connected to it became linked to Gerard Kuiper. The first person to find Pluto was the scientist Clyde Tombaugh in 1930. He found it in what is now called the Kuiper belt. At the time of its discovery, astronomers didn't know much about the outer solar system and didn't think there would be so many icy worlds beyond Neptune. Most people thought that the solar system was made up of gas giants, hard planets in the middle, and Neptune, an icy giant at the very edge. Scientists at the time thought Pluto was a single planet, even though its orbit was irregular and tilted. The second Kuiper Belt object wasn't found until 1992, 62 years after the first one. At this point, it was clear that Pluto was not a separate object, but rather a member of a larger group of objects in the outer solar system. After that, many KBOSA Kuiper Belt objects were found, which proved the presence of the Kuiper Belt, a region beyond Neptune that is home to a variety of icy worlds. Pluto has a special place in the history of astronomy because it was first called the Ninth Planet, a name that stuck for many years. However, as we learned more about the Kuiper Belt and found more KBOS, especially those bigger than Pluto, the International Astronomical Union changed the rules for what makes a body a planet in 2006. Pluto is now known as a dwarf planet, but it will always be remembered as one of the most important finds in our solar system. Without it, we would not have looked into the Kuiper Belt area as much as we do now. This one-of-a-kind place is thought to be an extension of our solar system because it is in the same spot in space and is affected by the sun's gravity. The eight major planets plus Neptune make up the inner solar system. The Kuiper belt on the other hand goes all the way to the edge of the solar system. The outer solar system is different from the inner solar system, it is made up of icy objects like comets, asteroids and dwarf planets. NASA says that the material in the Kuiper belt is thought to be leftovers from the early solar system, which is about 4.6 billion years old. It is thought to have preserved conditions and materials from that time, like seeing history happen right now. Pluto and its moons are in this belt, along with Haumea, Makemake and Eris, which are all dwarf planets. Besides that, the Kuiper belt is also home to many different kinds of smaller icy objects. This is a unique part of the solar system that we don't see very often. The Kuiper belt is much bigger than the main belt of asteroids. The main asteroid belt is made up mostly of asteroids and other rocks that are in the space between Mars and Jupiter. It's not too thick and contains many small to medium-sized bodies. The Kuiper belt on the other hand is a larger and more distant area. This means that the Kuiper belt has 20 to 100 times more mass than the asteroid belt, both in terms of the number of objects and their total weight. That's one reason why it was so surprising that it took so long to find out about it. But the fact that this place wasn't found right away doesn't mean it isn't important to the solar system. A lot of different heavenly bodies live there, such as the small planets Pluto, Haumea, Makemake, and Eris. Pluto was found by Clyde Tombaugh in 1930. It was once thought to be the ninth planet, 
but in 2006, the International Astronomical Union changed the standards for planets, which meant Pluto was now classified as a dwarf planet. With a diameter of about 2377 km, Pluto circles around the Sun, with other large dwarf planets in the Kuiper belt. Researchers and experts have also learned a lot more about this distant area thanks to their work on Pluto, but this was only the beginning. Haumea was found in 2004 by a group led by Mike Brown. Its unique long shape, which may be caused by its fast spin, adds to the variety of the Kuiper belt. This dwarf planet which is about 1960 kilometers across, has taught us a lot about the interesting characteristics of objects in the Kuiper belt. Make Make is another object that Mike Brown's team found in 2005. It has its own unique traits. Make Make is about 1430 kilometers across and doesn't have a significant atmosphere, however, its bright surface, which is made up of methane, ethane and folins, makes it one of the brightest objects in the Kuiper belt. Eris was also found in 2005. It is a bit smaller than Pluto but heavier, with a diameter of about 2326 km. Eris is an important part of the Kuiper belt. Its discovery led to a re-evaluation of what a planet is, and helped us learn more about the variety of objects in the Kuiper belt, and how they move together. These dwarf planets tell us a lot about the Kuiper belt's makeup, how it has changed over time, and its place in the history of the solar system. Without them, we would have no idea what this area was like. Many people around the world have mixed up the Kuiper belt and the Uit cloud. What these people don't know is that the Kuiper belt has more objects, and is thought to be where short-period comets come from because their orbital periods are shorter. The Uit cloud on the other hand, is even farther away and shaped like a sphere that covers the whole solar system. It's thought to extend from about 2000 AU to maybe 200,000 AU from the Sun. The Uit cloud is made up of icy objects that look a lot like dirty snowballs. It is thought to be where long-period comets with very elliptical paths that bring them closer to the Sun originate. The Kuiper belt and the Uit cloud are both places and forms that are different from each other, but they are both full of icy bodies. Both are thought to be possible comet sources. Comets are celestial bodies made up of ice, dust, and volatile compounds. They become noticeable as they get closer to the sun, and develop a glowing coma and a tail from the solar wind. It's okay to be confused sometimes, but it's still important to know the difference. Scientists are amazed by this place, because the Kuiper belt may only have a small amount of material left over from what it was like in the beginning. What we have now are literally only shards, the real thing has already disappeared, not by chance though. The NICE model is a set of ideas that says the orbits of the four largest planets in the solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, might change in several important ways. It suggests that the big planets in the outer solar system haven't always been in the same circular paths. Instead, they went through a period of dynamic orbital development. The model says that when these big planets interacted with each other, their paths changed in significant ways. It was thought that the Kuiper belt held 7 to 10 times the mass of Earth. However, the NICE model suggests that a lot of that material may have been lost as the orbits of the big planets change. Material in the Kuiper belt may have been spread out, thrown out of the solar system, or moved to other areas because of the big planet's gravitational pull and changes in their orbits. The Kuiper belt is slowly being worn away because of what's going on. Collisions between objects in the belt can break them up into smaller pieces, which can then collide with other objects in the belt. Different smaller objects might turn into comets at different times, the ones that don't turn into comets get crushed. The solar wind can carry the dust that is made when small particles hit each other away, making it disappear into space. All these things make the Kuiper belt less strong, which leads to a slow but steady loss of mass over time. Some things stay the same in this dynamic place, even though the Kuiper belt has been slowly losing mass for billions of years. It is still an important place in the solar system, where important things happen. Most people think that the New Horizons mission was one of the best ways to learn more about the Kuiper belt. The New Horizons mission is one of the best ways to learn about the Kuiper belt. It was launched in 2006 and flew by Pluto in 2015. As it kept moving into the Kuiper belt, it found more objects there. The photos from New Horizons showed us things we had never seen before and made us want to learn more about the Kuiper belt. In 2014 it was decided that the spacecraft would fly by 486,958 Arakov, a Kuiper belt object that was not found until after the New Horizons mission had already left. Arakov looks like a snowman with two round pieces, and its journey there shows how many different things there are in the Kuiper belt. The Kuiper belt is still being studied to learn more about how our solar system was made. 
with the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, we now have a chance to learn more about the Kuiper Belt. The James Webb Space Telescope at AWST is the most advanced space observatory to date. It was launched on December 25, 2021, with the goal of looking deeper into the universe and finding new things that Hubble and other space telescopes couldn't see. JWST can see objects at much longer distances and in higher resolution than its predecessors. Its sophisticated instruments can capture infrared light, which makes it easier to see the faint light coming from faraway objects. When we use JWST to look at the Kuiper belt, we can see it more clearly, making it easier to find objects and study their makeup. There is more detail in the images from JWST than in any other telescope before it. JWST's pictures are expected to provide a more complete look at the Kuiper belt. These pictures could show new things, add to what we already know about known objects, and help us learn more about this interesting area beyond Neptune. As JWST continues to watch and record the Kuiper belt, scientists are looking forward to new discoveries that will help us understand the history of the solar system and how it came to be. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries, signing off.